So let's go ahead and get started. And um, I think most of you probably know me at this point. Um, I'm Shelly Klein. I am the uh, Special Events Director for the Freelance Exchange of Kansas City. So I've been working to put this together with all of our great speakers. So thank you for attending. Um, I'm excited to have Cami Travis Gross here. Um, she is a transformational coach. She helps uh, creatives identify what's got them stuck, re-engage in their creativity. And as a national speaker, she likes to share her hard learned methods for long lasting success. She's a seasoned graphic designer and design strategist with 25 plus years of experience. And um, as you may know, or you may have heard us just say, she's a past president of the Freelance Exchange in Kansas City, and she was fantastic and continues to contribute to uh, the group in so many great ways. And this is just one of the many ways she does it. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Cami, and uh, it's all yours. Thank you. And thank you for everything you're doing to put this or this event on. It is so appreciated. I know by me and, and everybody who's attending these. So kudos to you and everyone at Freelance Exchange to make this happen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, hopefully you got this uh, form. This is the brand checklist. If you didn't, email at fxfkc.com, right? Uh, and put it in the chat and you can get it to you right away. All right, so let's jump in. So, and now I can't see any of you, but that's okay. So branding for scrappy freelancers. Uh, the reason I say scrappy is because entrepreneurs and freelancers generally don't need anyone's permission. We don't take no for an answer, uh, or if we do, we keep looking until uh, elsewhere until we get a yes, right? So we're, we're by nature a little bit rebellious and rebellion is a good thing because it, it makes sure uh, we know there's a better way and we make sure that our people know it, right? So in your efforts to brand yourself, and this is what this is for, is to brand yourself, pay attention to the things that come easy to you. Uh, the things that you are uncomfortable with, but that you, you know, plow through and you get there is fine. The things that you're uncomfortable with that you get angry and frustrated, that's not okay. And that's the time to ask for help. I'm going to go through all of these things that are on the brand checklist one at a time and I give you examples and hopefully help you get on your way to branding yourself and know where you need help. Uh, and I'll say from the get go that the freelance exchange is a great place to find help with the things that you're not good at, right? So what's a brand? What is a brand? I, I think a brand is really um, your our expression of, of who you are, or who you want to be, or who you want your customers to be. You know, it's kind of your, your image essentially. It's, it's you living your mission statement on your sleeve to a certain extent. Perfect. Yes. And I'm so glad that, that that was articulated so nicely. I've done this talk where people say, it's your logo or it's your slogan or and it's so much more than that so that's kind of what i want to talk about is all of the pieces all that big picture stuff i would also add that your brand is everything that your customers or your audience associates with you yep it's what they say about you when your back is turned <laughs> right but it is it, it, it's all it's not, it's, not, it's not just all the touch points but the emotions associated with you very um, much yeah very much. Nicely put, Cordelia. Thank you. So your brand uh, is every possible contact you have with your clients and potential clients, your customers, your potential customers. Every touch point involves your brand. So what should a brand do? A brand should evoke a certain emotion, but what emotion? How do you know these things? That's what we're going to get into. It should, your brand should mirror your core values that you have about your, your company with every interaction that you have. It should reflect the customer experience that you have with your, the customers have with your company. And it basically creates and maintains your reputation. Your brand advocates are the ones who sing your praises and get you more customers. And you want to be able to build more brand advocates. Uh, and like Cordelia was saying, it's an emotional connection with every, customer or potential customer that you have. So what are the parts? Let's dig in. I'm gonna give you some exaggerated examples. 
Um, but first, first off is your business name. Uh, it needs to be original, obviously, not copyrighted by somebody else. Um, sometimes it can clearly indicate your product or service, um, like mine does not. Cami iMac, what the hell is that? Um, sometimes it's uh, very clear, custom lawn and landscape. That's a local customer here in Kansas City. Well, I know exactly what they do. Their name gives it away. Um, but if they were called custom lawn and they're a shoe manufacturer, that's a problem, right? So let's jump in with some really bad examples of naming. Right? Am I gone? Funeral home. Oh my God. Or this one. How about this one? It's kind of hard to read, but it says Sam and Ella's. Also read as Salmonella. Salmonella's. Pizza and subs. I wouldn't want to eat there. Chocolate log. Embarrassing. Curl up and die, salon. I can't tell you how many of these are registered across the country. This is a very popular name for a salon. This is a great example. It comes from coca leaves and cola nuts, the two main ingredients in the original um, recipe. And it's relevant to the product. That's the name of the company is the product. Or this one. Cammy, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, your, your screen is not showing. There we go. So now these are funny, right? Instead of me just reading them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stubbs, yeah. Sam and Ella's, the chocolate log, curl up and die, oh my God. Coca-Cola, right? And Yahoo, I think that's where I left off. So uh, Jonathan Swift coined the original name for Yahoo. It was like somebody who is repulsive, filthy, um, creatures that kind of resembled humans. And the two people the, who founded Yahoo uh, considered themselves Yahoos. And they thought, eh, why not? It's totally different uh, from the competition, completely unique, very memorable. Uh, even their color is memorable. So yeah. This is a fun one. Anybody who knows me knows how much I love Sugru. Sugru is um, invented by an Irish woman in her 20s in Ireland. It's this moldable, air-cured, silicon rubber glue stuff. If you're at all curious, sugru.com, it's amazing. But the word means play in Irish. It's super simple. Uh, the word itself is relevant to the product. So I invite you to explore uh, business names. So that's one. Logo. That's two. Please, please don't ever crowdsource your logo. Um, your logo is the face of your company. So you wouldn't want someone, uh, you wouldn't want to crowdsource your own face. You want to take some ownership in that, right? Uh, be aware of trends in logos. For example, these, just a little similar. It also makes them look very dated. Um, avoid literal logos if you can as well. I used to work for the American Public Works Association and they wanted a logo that incorporated all aspects of public works. So that meant um, snow removal, watershed, um, right of way, utilities, uh, and on and on. And I said, no, you, the literal logo is never going to work for a company like that. So be aware of trends, avoid literal logos. Um, avoid um, stock photography logos. This is, I mean, yes, the logo on the right is fine, but how many other people are going to use it for a logo as well? What does that say about your company? It says your company is cheap and buys stock photography for their logos, right? Also, don't use Fiverr. This is a logo by um, my friend Jeff Fisher out of Portland, Oregon. It's a beautifully designed logo. It takes advantage of the negative space. He really did a lot of uh, research on this and it's beautifully done. And he has a, a, um, a lawyer on retainer for all of the copyright infringement he receives. The majority of them are from fiber. So this is massive um, and tragic that so many people 
just think, oh yeah, it's, it's on Fiverr, it's fine. So please don't use that. And then crowdsourcing is another a really bad idea because you end up with the most vanilla flavor in the most, um, in the instance where you need it to be the most pistachio or the most unique and special. If I were to ask this entire group to agree on an ice cream flavor and then we'll get ice cream, it's either gonna be chocolate or vanilla. So it's very, whenever you, you crowdsource something as personal as a logo, your ROI goes down, studies show this, and you get the least, uh, least surprising and most mundane and most mediocre logo you can get. When it comes to experiential design, however, like your website, have everyone and their cousin test it. But logos are very, very custom, very personal, so don't crowdsource them. There we go, how come we're not, there we go. Also make sure, like this is Apple's original logo, it's beautiful, it's lovely, handcrafted. However, what does it look like if it's really tiny? You can't tell what the heck it is, right? So once you decide on a logo, test the heck out of it yourself. Make it small, make it black and white, reverse it. Make sure that it works at all sizes. That's why this logo works so well. It's very simple, it can be reversed out, it can be um, any color, it can be any material, and it still works and is still recognizable. Right? All right, any questions on logos? No? Okay, moving on. We're gonna go, this is, this next part is the most important part, I think, of the entire branding process of branding yourself, and that's your core values. Your core values are acting like your North Star, so that whatever you decide, whatever kind of clients you're gonna pursue, you, you check in with your core values. Does that ideal client uh, align with your core values? Yes, then that's a good client, right? So we're gonna get into what that sounds like in just a little bit here, you, but you and your employees need to be able to articulate what those core values are if you have employees. If it's just you, you need to be able to say, you know, these are my core values at any given moment. So what is this brand? Look familiar? Jeep. Yes, Jeep. Jeep's core values are freedom, adventure, authenticity, and passion. Totally aligns with the Jeep customer experience, right? How about this one? Nike. Their core values are authentic athletic performance, All right? This one, easy. Theirs is a single word. Anybody wanna take a guess what Harley Davidson's core value is? Pride. Well, that's- Is it freedom? Passion? There were two at once, I'm sorry, one, one more time. Andy? Passion. Close. Freedom. Freedom. Think about all of the, yeah. their products support freedom. Their advertising supports freedom. This one is interesting. The core values for the Olympics are friendship, respect, and excellence. Well, that's interesting. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. This one two words and oh my god it's so succinct and so beautiful their core values are caring shared yep. hallmark. beautiful yep hallmark so a lot of people confuse the the core values with the slogan core values are inward facing this is what you use as your own north star and your slogan is outward facing it's what your customers use to identify with your core values okay so nikes that's an easy one right what is Just Nike's? do it. Just do it. Perfect. Harley Davidson, it's time to ride. <laughs> Olympics, it's not well known, but it's, uh, it's embodied in everything they do. Faster, higher, stronger. Right? Hallmarks, what is their slogan? 
when you care enough to send the very best. Yes. Yes. I mean, exactly. From the beginning, right? Change it now. It's when you care enough, you can change the world. So they've updated it in the last oh, couple years. Oh, I'm, I'm behind the times. Thank you. <laughs> All right, this one. Work hard, have fun, make history. Amazon. Amazon. Yep. Work hard. What does I say? Work. Work. Oh, work hard, have fun, make history. All right. This one, Patagonia. In business to save our home planet. That makes sense. And it yeah. makes sense for the products and for the customers. It's the entire experience. Yep. So their slogan is great. Uh, melt in your mouth, not in your hands. <laughs> All right. I think I got my point across there. All right, products and services. So this one, um, your products and services should also reflect your core values, right? For example, if you were to hear about Cadillac offering an economy, uh, a compact economy car for $8,000, how do you feel about that? You're like, wait, Cadillac? That's, that's, that's not aligned with who they are, right? Or how about a luxury SUV smart car? Right, it sticks out. So, you want to be able to um, name your products and services with what aligns to what they are. Um, test the products if you're like if you have a service and you're marketing to Pakistan, for example. Make sure that the translations are solid because otherwise things like this show up. This is um, Pakistan. An Iranian consumer goods company, they made the Farsi word for snow, but it's barf. So, okay, we don't want barf soap. Coca-Cola even stumbled in this area, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, when it was first marketed to China, it was sometimes, sometimes translated to bite the wax tadpole. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah. Mercedes-Benz, same thing. Benzy. The Chinese market, uh, Benzi, the word means rush to die. So if you describe your product as a car that'll take you where you need to go in style, make sure you manage those expectations um, or someone will be disappointed. Because both of these things, th that statement could be true of, right? Make sure that your products and services are of the quality and nature that they're advertised. If you describe your, your product as a fine timepiece, make sure that it, it actually is, because one of these is not a real Rolex. Those expectations, one of these is several thousand dollars and one of them you can get for less than 20. So make sure you're managing expectations know exactly who your, who your client base is, your ideal customer base, and speak directly to them. I think the business plan um, talk in the last hour was really great at identifying what those, what those people need. All right, moving on to collateral. Collateral is anything that your customer holds in their hands that is advertising to them. So the quality and style of your advertising, whether it's business cards or uh, brochures, letterhead, anything. Um, and I'll give you a great example of where this went really south. I was um, at a law firm with beautifully decorated interiors, really dark hardwood and um, crisp white marble and lots of glass and stainless steel. It was gorgeous. And the lawyer handed me a business card that was flappy. It was almost like post-it note thin. It was so thin. It was horrible. So the two and the discord made me not want to use them at all. I thought, well, okay, there's, there's not a cohesive thought behind this entire brand. This guy's business card. Holy cow. Wow. What is going on when it's not, when good is not good enough, call bad. What does that have to do with the wolf or the moon? And how many typefaces are going on here? Oh, oh. Jesus. Yeah, right? 
Yeah. Here's another one. How, how, how big is that typeface? They do Fixum Brothers, computer, laptop, smartphone, smartphone, tablet, setup, repair, virus removal, data recover, website development, security setup, and tune up. Do I actually trust these guys? Yikes. Yeah. How many things can you truly specialize in? Right. And, and how many people can actually read this is if this is your business card? I mean, I have trouble and this is probably twice the size of a real card on my business or on my screen here. This is an example of a beautiful, beautiful business card that's die cut and handed out flat, but it folds up. It gives people something to do. Um, Sally Hogshead's business card has little tear-off labels on it where you, you peel off your, your primary uh, fascinator. It's amazing. Things, business cards that give people things to do are awesome. Not all business cards need this. I just thought this was a great example. How about this brochure? The first thing you see is stop. Don't do the thing, whatever it is. Hello, glows and drop shadows and and starbursts and oh my god i've actually had i worked for a company that asked me to do something very similar to this it was an eyeglass company people sometimes really think this is work this works it's horrible right this one i have no idea what it is they're selling but i i want it because it looks very luxurious it's got the gold foil look and i think it's just a sample of the paper but it's beautiful and it gives me a sense of oh i know what this brand is about. This brand is about luxury. It's going to be pricey, but it's going to be high quality. So take a minute and think about the collateral that you have, your business cards, any brochures, whatever that you have, and think what is the quality message that I'm sending and does it agree with the actual quality of the service or product that you offer? Okay. And just be mindful of your clientele there. Yeah. Um, if you are the high-end paper seller, that's great, but if yeah. you're not, um, the customer's going to see. I'm going to be exactly. paying an extra fifteen percent for, you know, this level of service, which is great, but yes. I don't really need. Yeah, you're managing expectations. Exactly. Good point, John. Uh, another example of managing expectations is like a movie trailer. Uh, movie trailer. You see, how many people have seen a movie? They see the trailer and they think, "Oh, that was really good." And you see the movie, and it's like, "Wait a minute, that wasn't at all like the trailer. That was awful." Yeah, same thing. You want to deliver what is advertised and your collateral is working as your advertising. Uh, I don't know if any of you do packaging. I'm just going to breeze through this a little quickly. Um, oops, prices. Prices first. Um, prices, um, again, should re reflect the quality. For example, if Nike offered a $1.99 pair of shoes, you'd think, okay, those aren't Nike. That's not going to be the Nike quality. Or if Walmart offered a $15,000 television, you're not going to expect the same level of quality because of the pricing. So a lot of designers and writers, they think, well, I'm gonna price myself low so I can get some clients. But what you're telling your clients is that your services aren't worth the value, worth a valuable price, you know? So my logos, for example, as a designer, my logos start at $3,000 and go up to 10 because that's the quality of the service my clients are getting. If you are charging $50 for a logo, your clients are going to expect that. They're going to expect a $50 logo. I have a friend of mine who charges $5 for logos, but they're five minute logos and they look like hell. <laughs> so be aware that your pricing lines up with what is being delivered. And if it's quality, then the price needs to reflect that. All right, now onto packaging. If anybody does packaging, we're gonna go through this quickly. Um, again, it needs to accurately depict the quality that they're getting. It also needs to be able to stand out because, oh my God, look at this shelf. Is there anything that stands out to you? It's all the same. If you have packaging, be aware of where it's going to be living on the shelf, what it's gonna be sitting next to, um, how it needs to differentiate. Uh, this is a great example of what not to do. <laughs> this is, um, I think it's from Target. No, it's not Target. I forget where these are from. Anyway, but they could easily get mixed up. And even though one has Braille on it, what are these for? What are that? I would hate to be looking for one of these 
Holy cow. Yeah, I don't even want to go there. Speaking of pharmaceuticals, these pain in the butt, right? These are designed for the pharmacists to print out and slap on bottles. They suck on the labels, check, done. There was a gal, um, and I heard her speak at the How Conference. Her name is Deborah Adler. One day, Deborah's grandmother accidentally took her grandfather's medicine. They both, both of their names started with H. It was Helen and Herman Adler. Uh, and grandma accidentally took grandma's medicine and was very ill because of it. But the incident made her really look at this process and go, wait a minute, these are designed for the pharmacists, not for the users. So she designed these on her own as a better, uh, a better solution. So the name of the medicine is huge. The, the, where it says target guest, that's where the name of the person taking the medicine is. Uh, the info card, color coded, because I mean, how many of us who need glasses don't actually wear glasses in the bathroom first thing in the morning or last thing at night? Um, the cautions are very big. They have pictures on them. And she designed this on her own. And Target saw it and went, hell yes, we're going we're gonna to adopt that. So now this is Target's um, internal pharmacy packaging. Same thing with ketchup, right? You've seen this. What's wrong with this? Nothing, but it could be better. So this staves off the eternal question, or do you dip it or do you squeeze it out? It's both. This is a beautifully packaged, beautiful solution. Well, now, now you can sell to two different people. Exactly. Um, you can I want to squeeze it, mine. You can sell it to everybody who uses ketchup. <laughs> right? OK. All right. Any questions on packaging or anything we've covered so far? No? OK. Moving on to social media. So again, those core values that we talked about, your core, core values should be reflected in all of your social media. Um, and are you meeting your customers where they're looking for you on social media? For example, do you really need to be on TikTok? Is that where your customers are? And don't be on any social media channels that you're not willing to maintain and update regularly. That's really important. Make sure that your, <laughs> your passwords are secure. Otherwise, you get Mr. Flasher here on your Disney site. Make sure that all of your images are appropriate to your entire audience, intended and unintended. All right. And using the, and one more thing about social media is voice. Um, a lot of social media accounts are very um, conversational and friendly. Some are very quiet and muted. Some are very loud and brassy and outspoken. Uh, again, they all need to, ref all of your social media posts in all channels need to reflect your companies and your, your, you as a freelancer, your core values. All right, advertising. Oh, I'm gonna take a drink of water, I'm a lot of talking. Advertising. Advertising speaks to your ideal customer or your potential customer where they are. And I can't stress that enough, where they are. You gotta find out where they're looking for you and it takes some sleuthing. Your advertising all obviously should also reflect the quality and the service, quality of the service and products that you offer. Um, for example, if you're a high-end, uh, let's see, a high-end shoe company, do you really wanna advertise in a bathroom, a public bathroom? Maybe, but maybe not. What about a vacation spot? These are actual photos of advertising in bathrooms. And does the placement of this advertising represent the quality of your product or service that you're offering? Now this one is great because it actually, uh, I, it's, it's targeted to the exact ideal audience. This is in a pool hall. So, oh my God, it's perfect. This one's great. It's a very clever use of a bathroom mirror. For mirrored sunglasses, right? This one is beautiful. This is Mothers Against Drunk Driving. The poster is meant to be crumpled and hung up crooked. It's beautiful. 
really, really nicely done. Where, where is this? It is where their customers are. It's meeting the customers where they are, where their ideal audience is. This beautiful. Anyway. All right, language. This one's an easy one. Uh, language is all the language that you use. If you are, if you consider yourself, you know, rough and tumble and your clients are, you know, aggressive and manly and they're good with cussing, then, then your language should be, you know, straight up exactly uh, uh, supporting your core values that support that and your advertising and your social media, right? If you're, for example, if you are, um, if you see employees working in a shoe store, athletic shoe store, and they're laughing and talking about last night's game, perfectly appropriate. If they're laughing and talking about last night's game and they work at a funeral home, not appropriate, right? Attitude, um, including body language. This is a big one. Most people can read between the lines. Most people can, can spot inauthenticity. They can spot a fake and nobody likes a fake, right? If you are, for example, I'm thinking of an employee at Hot Topic is gonna be completely different from their attitude, their language, their body language is gonna be completely different from somebody who works at a diamond store. So your attitude, it needs to reflect your core values. Your appearance should also reflect your core values. So is a suit and tie always appropriate? No, if you're working at a, an indoor trampoline park, or what about a swimsuit? Well, it's totally appropriate if you're a lifeguard. So again, what's appropriate? Um, I said a quick point about advertising, and I think another part of it is meet the customer where their needs are. So if I'm driving in Los Angeles, um, an advertisement about how you can save me time is going much better than maybe I don't know, Texas, where you have 80 miles an hour road. Yeah, yeah, um, it's, it's meeting them where they are and meeting them where they're looking for you both. Perfect, yes. Yeah, filling That's their needs, how can I support you? Exactly, great. This is another one for appearance. This is perfect for us, us freelancers who work from home. Heck yes, I do this, and heck yes, I'd stick my bare feet up on the table. Not where there's food though, because that's kind of gross, but yeah, totally appropriate. Um, beware of your first impressions as well. I still, I have this client out of Dallas. His name is Billy Bob. And my first impression of Billy Bob was on the phone. Billy Bob says, hi, I need me a brochure. You think you can design me a brochure? And I had a, an idea of what Billy Bob was going to be. I thought, okay, he's going to show up in his pickup truck and he's going to have a cowboy hat on. Turns out Billy Bob shows up in a Mercedes wearing a three-piece Armani suit, right? But he also has a first impression of me because I was pregnant with my first child or second child at the time. And so whenever he thinks of me, he, th he always asks me about my kids because he remembers me being pregnant. First impressions last. So craft, craft them carefully. All right, premises for anybody who's got a store. Like, what does this place look like? Yes. What does it feel like? What does it smell like? And how do their ideal customers feel about it? For the people who like to dig and look for bargains, it's perfect. Or this place, it appeals to their ideal customer. What does this place feel like and smell like? This is an actual photo of a psychiatrist's office. I find it deeply disturbing. <laughs> How would this place feel and smell, right? All right, so websites. This is a massive, massive undertaking. Uh, anybody who's ever built their own website knows. Um, I just relaunched my new website, cami.coach, and I really dislike doing my own website. But I'm a scrappy freelancer, so I got it done. If your logo is your face, and your business card is your handshake, and your website is your house. And you cannot force anyone to come into your house. You wanna invite them and make it very obvious that the door is open to them specifically. So 
your customers should be able to find everything that they're looking for very quickly. It should all align with your core values. Um, it should, especially your homepage, should be all about them and nothing about you. You want to make sure that you see them um, and that they feel like as soon as they land on your, on your homepage, that you see them, you get them, and you can help them. I cannot stress that enough. So many um, freelancers' websites I see are, I do this and I do that and I do this. Same thing with an elevator pitch. You don't want to start out with I, I, I. It's who do you help? How do you help them? What are those pain points? Like in the, the last session that we just had, the last webinar, who do you help? So I can say, as a graphic designer, I help small businesses uh, clarify their visual messaging so they can compete with the big boys. Pretty clear who that helps. There's an I statement in there, but it's very, very clear. And my website uh, reflects that. So that, and a great way to start this is with a question. Are you looking for, are you tired of, are you frustrated with, do you want more of, right? And this is a great time for a first impression. Your SEO or your website should include SEO, obviously. It should be responsive since more than half um, of users access your website from mobile now. Don't be afraid to utilize a UX designer because, oh my God, they're worth their weight in gold. They clarify things you didn't even know were issues. Uh, and there are some great ones in the freelance exchange. And then be aware of the language that you're using on your website as well. Here's a horrible example. This is actually a live website. When was it last updated? 2004? Or this one? Hello. Before, yes, yeah, September 2017. Yikes. This one even. Horrible. Who is this serving? Ugh. Okay, this is an example of a beautiful website. Book unique places to stay and things to do. That speaks so clearly to the ideal customer looking for an Airbnb stay. It makes it so easy. And they, this photograph always changes. The next time you go to Airbnb, it's gonna be different. Exceptionally, exceptionally good homepage for a website. It's got a call to action. It aligns with the core values of Airbnb, unique places to stay and unique things to do. And you think I could be staying at that, you know, that house next time. Right. That could be me. Me as a customer, I see myself in this landing page. Your customers should be able to see themselves on your landing page somehow, whether it's with visuals or with the language that you use. It's all about your, it's like a love letter to your ideal clients. I cannot stress that enough. This is another great one. Consider the Akimbo workshops because it's time to level up. And it's Seth Godin, so you know it's gonna be good. Ooh, I wanna find out more. Just enough information that I wanna know more. Because your work matters, scrap it in my life. Perfect, perfect website. This is another great one. This is um, a coach in California. I help visionary women leaders to reconnect with their creativity and breathe new life into their purpose, passion, and careers. Super clear. It's like, wait, I'm a visionary female leader and I want to connect with my creativity. I want that. Learn more. Bam. Credibility there in the, in the logos, the string of logos of people that she's worked with, companies she's worked with. Beautiful. Communication. So communication is the actual voice that you use and that's including the language that you speak with, the language that's on your website, the language that's in all of your collateral. Um, this is the voice and your typeface choice clarifies that voice. Again, uh, I cannot take somebody seriously who is typing to me or, or has uh, Comic Sans on their business card or on their uh, emails even. I had, to, I had to have a very strong conversation with a CEO to stop using Comic Sans that it undermined her credibility as a CEO. Um, and make sure that all of your communication across all media, all mediums is all uh, the same voice, right? The quality of your images is huge. 
How many of you have seen these kind of photos on menus at restaurants? Oh my God, does this look appealing? Bleh. This, I, I just cringed. This was Martha freaking Stewart. It looks vile. Seriously, this was on her website. I'm like, really, Martha Stewart, you can do better. You can pay somebody to take those. This one, all right, now well, that's probably what you're in, gonna end up getting, which is better than this, which everybody knows, oh my God, it's not gonna look like that. There's no such thing as a six inch tall hamburger, please. This is too good to be true. So there's a nice medium in there to be had. All right. Whoa, brand. There's a lot of moving parts to it, right? So many different pieces. It's not a logo, it's not a slogan, it's not a website, but it's all of these things. Like I said earlier, it's every, every possible contact your client or ideal client or potential client has with you and your company. The emotions that your customers feel after interacting with your product or service is also part of your brand. You wanna curate that experience. You wanna curate how people feel after working with you. Now, who's doing it right? Ikea. When you think about Ikea, it all agrees with itself, right? Their business name is an acronym for the founder, the farm he grew up in, the village he grew up in, uh, and he's dyslexic, so he needed something very, very simple. The logo is very simple, it's very bold, it's very clear and different. Their core values, and oh my God, there's a string of them. Togetherness, caring for people and planet, cost conscious, simplicity, renew and improve, different with a meaning, give and take responsibility, and lead by example. Their slogan is to create a better everyday life for the many people. Even that that's all uh, shown in their stores, their products, their services. Ikea loves squares because it saves in packaging. Um, there's a saying on, that I saw somewhere that Ikea hates air, that there's never any wasted air in any of their packaging. Uh, their brand is consistent across uh, their products, their premises, their pricing, their website, their packaging, and they've even now gone to a mushroom-based packaging because they care. All of their descriptions are simple and concise, all their collateral, and all the other aspects from the brand checklist, right? This is another one that, and I'm sure you've seen this, you know, in countless other, uh, from countless other sources that Apple's doing it right. Um, Steve Jobs said he was on one of his fruitarian diets when he came up with the name Apple. He just said, you know, he came back from an apple farm. It's like, yeah, it sounds, you know, fun spirited, simple. It's not intimidating. People aren't intimidated by apples. And that's why he chose it. Their slogan, think different, right? Their core values are make the best products on earth, simple, not complex. Simple, not complex. Simple. It's their premises, it's their packaging, their products, their services, their ads. It's consistent. That's what makes it so good. What other brands can you think of that are doing it right? Anybody want to chime in? What other brands you can think of that are like, oh, yeah. I, mean, I think insurance companies, um, you know, how, now that they're in the, not in the news so much, but, you know, we hear about them giving 30% back or whatever it is, or the refunds for um, March and stuff. Makes mm -hmm. us feel good and makes us feel like we chose the right mm -hmm. insurance company to be with, even though you look at it from the reality perspective, it, they were going to make so much money. Yeah. Um, simply because we're not driving. So yeah. they can afford it. Yeah. Yeah. Any other Nike and stuff. Great examples. Nike, Adidas, Volkswagen. Yep. Nike, Adidas, Volkswagen, all of those excellent examples. Mercedes are really good car companies. Yeah. Jeep and Harley both do really well. Mm -hmm. Any others? 
Yeah, and definitely I'm not what John had said about uh, things that are happening right now during the virus is not all gyms, like we, we saw what Equinox shouldn't be doing, but um, like Planet Fitness, they've suspended memberships right now. And they've even offered um, workouts you can do at home on their app. So here's something that you would think, oh, it's in direct competition of what they offer, but it's right. showing you that they're caring you about you as a person more than just you as your dollar and yeah. helping you still have right. resources to fulfill your fitness journey in the midst yeah. of you that you can't go visit them in person right now. Yeah, that extends their core values all the way out in a new way that they, that they haven't done before. Excellent. The, the organization, I think, the lar well, large-scale organization, I think, that does such a great job with their core values and articulating that is the why. The YMCA has done an extensive, starting really, I think, with their rebranding a few years ago, yeah. did a great job communicating that they're about the community yeah. and that they're about that those values influence everything they do. So one of the ways that they, and they're really, um, the more they're, you know, then they, they promote the fact that, you know, we're more than a gym. We're more than just this one thing that we provide. What they're doing right now during the pandemic is encouraging members to keep their membership dues up because they're providing free yeah. childcare to, uh, first responders. Yeah. Again, it's, and it's extending workers. their core values outward. It's perfect. Yes, right, very good right. example. So they're very integrated. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Okay, so that's these are all of the um, these are all of the subjects I touched on across the screen. Now, your business name you're responsible for products and services. That's you. Language. That's you. Advertising, if this is not your sweet spot, the thing you need is an advertising or media planner. Oh, and that's covered by my things here. Ah, social media, if you don't have time or the bandwidth to deal with social media, hire a social media expert. Those are in the freelance exchange. Um, writer, photographer for images, I mean, uh, photographer, videographer for images, copywriters for slogans, SEO experts, web designers, web developers, UX and UI designers, copywriters for your website. And oh my God, you're, you get an idea of how many moving parts your website has. If you need help with your appearance, if your appearance is an important part of your brand, get a fashion stylist. How many, how many red carpet walkers have fashion stylists because they don't want to do it themselves? Market researcher, logo designer, public relations or copywriter for your communications, interior designers for your premises if you have a brick and mortar, packaging, package designers, oh my God, good package designers are amazing. Graphic designers for your collateral. And, ah, core values, you need a marketing strategist or I can help you with that, that's one of the things I do. If you have need to help with your attitude, maybe a counselor? All right, so all the things with an asterisk are the things that the freelance exchange um, has members who do this. So feel free to go to fxfkc.com and check them out if you need help. All right, questions. Um, I don't have a question but more of a comment. I recently watched okay. a uh, Simon Sinek video oh, kind yeah. of talking about leadership and stuff. And I guess one of my takeaways from there is when you're looking at a company like Apple and a competitor of Microsoft, Microsoft could tomorrow, they can go invest a million dollars and create a MacBook yeah. um, and an iPhone for that price, really. Yeah. I mean, have 99% of the capabilities of that. Um, but what they're missing and why that would not sell, it comes down to their brand. Microsoft does not have the um, easy to use persona, even though many of their products are easy to use. They, yeah, can't they just... don't have brand advocates. Yeah. It's not just, yeah, it's not just the easy to use. All of the, most of, uh, almost all of the computers are available on the consumer level are easy to use. It's the insane attention to detail. Jobs was taught as a kid that the, even the hidden parts, the parts that you don't see are as important as everything else. Yeah. And he was a ruthless perfectionist. Yes. Ruthless. And that's the thing. And that's why Apple has, you know, like myself, insane loyalists because yeah. not to, you know, not, we recognize when they stumble too, but uh, they, 
uh, have had a relentless culture, and I don't think it'd be a fun place to work at all. But they did. Have, <laughs> from what I've heard, it's not fun. But they have they a have relentless that. culture of like doing every damn thing right. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it, how many people have Microsoft stickers on the back of their cars? Yeah, nobody. And how many people have <laughs> Apple stickers on the back of their cars? Yeah. That they that that fanaticism and that brand advocacy comes from loving the experience. Um, I I have coached people who are like, oh my God, you need to work with Cami because she changed my life. And those are my brand advocates. Um, those are the people I want um, spreading the word about my coaching. Um, yeah. For example, Matt Nichols, his photography is amazing. He's got clients who say, oh my God, you need photography? Go to Matt Nichols. He's amazing. Those, that's the kind of relationship building you want to do with every single um, interaction that you have so that your brand is solid, your brand is being developed by your brand advocates. That's the best possible place to be. I think that's important because there's a thousand photographers out there who can do 99% of what Matt does. Um, but in terms of the end product, um, but what people crave from his customer service yeah. um, is it's Matt listening to, to me. His, it's going to his Northlight studio and experiencing the, 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 the entire process of having Matt do a shoot with you. And people who get it, who understand like, oh, that was amazing and it was effortless and I didn't have to worry about it. And Matt took care of all these little tiny details and it was fabulous. That's the kind of experience you want to create and, and nurture and um, grow every with every experience with every client possible client prospective client all of it all right any more questions all right anybody who would like my slide deck I am happy to send I'll take it awesome Amy, do you want to do you want to send it directly to everybody I can send you their emails everybody yes actually that would be great okay cool. perfect thanks Kimmy absolutely and i will see you again oh tonight by the way tonight i'm hosting a free freelance community happy hour it's every tuesday night until this covid crap is over the website is bitly you know what i'm just going to put it in the chat <laughs> <laughs> bitly slash freelance happy hour and the the um capitalizations are important for bitly so freelance happy hour every Tuesday night and we get around uh, ask well Julie's around here somewhere but um, it's we we recognize where we're struggling we support each other it's just a, another community space that I'm holding open to support my fellow freelancers because you know we're alone anyway and this is just compounded things I want to support my fellow freelancers and then tomorrow I'm giving a talk also with um, the Freelance Focus, and it's called The Great Pause and Other Effects of COVID-19, and it's tomorrow at three o'clock, so please feel free to come. That's gonna be full of really good stuff. I hope you all join me there. Thank you so much, Cami. This has been awesome. Thanks everybody um, for being here, and thanks for giving of your time. Uh, we will see you tomorrow at three o'clock and we've got one more session today at 1 30. Um, Julie Cortez is going to be up. So we'll hopefully see you over there. Thanks everybody. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.